Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to do like an impromptu video going over uh, Bitwig. And the reason for that is I would like to get into more of like a Euro rack, modular, maybe semi modular type of a, a setup. And I've seen a lot of videos, um, you know, about Bitwig and how it's kind of designed to be really compatible with uh, these kind of setups. And I have not really used it yet. Um, I just watch a lot of videos about it. So today I just want to do like a really high level video of just going over what Bitwig is and, you know, like my first 15 minutes on the DAW itself. And um, it's probably not going to be like too educational, but it's going to be more like a, you know, real life vlog style uh, impromptu video. So yeah, without further ado, let's go in and have a look. So before we do anything, I just want to show you here. Um, if you go to Bitwig's website, um, it's literally bitwig.com and you can just um, push try over here. So Bitwig actually gives you um, a free trial for, you know, the entire studio package um, and you can just download it without, you know, going through any hoops or anything. Um, the biggest thing is that you cannot um, save your um, f project files and and I think there is some other, you know, limitations to it. But for the pur purposes of this tutorial, you know, we don't need any of that. So yeah, you can just go through this and download Bitwig for your own um, operating system. All right, so once you open Bitwig, um, it gives you this screen. Um, I think we can just say demo mode. Yeah, as you can see here, it says only saving and exporting are disabled. So that's pretty good. Um, it gives you a lot of you know good opportunities to uh, explore the program before you make the purchase. So let's go into demo mode. As I said, this is going to be pretty much like an impromptu style video. Um, I'm pretty much seeing these things the first time as I go through this. So please bear with me. Um, I'm going to try to figure out, you know, what these are. You get the screen. And since I'm a Cubase user, this is slightly uh, familiar to me because whenever I open Cubase 2, I get, uh, you know, opening screen like this. Um, let's see what we can do. So we get uh, recent projects here my projects, my templates, um, you have your settings. Um, I have three displays in my setup, so I think you can, okay, you can do single display, dual display. All right, that's kind of cool. You can do triple display, that's kind of cool. Um, I'll just stick to this one right now because I don't want to mess up my you know recording settings. Um, so let's just stick to this one display, but if you have more than one display, I guess that's a good thing. In Cubase, you can just have different windows and you can basically, you know, put those in uh, wherever you want, basically. Um, so I guess this is um, slightly less flexible than Cubase, the displays and everything. Um, you can play with color modes, mouse transport, okay. Behavior, um, on behavior, it says t open on start, dashboard, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all kinds of, you know, miscellaneous stuff here. On the audio, let's see, yeah, you can pretty much set up your audio drive here. My my Asia drive is Motu, that's pretty good, it sees it. Um, you can do control panel, whatever. You can add your um, ins and outs here. So if you were to, you know, add, I guess, like, um, I don't know, like hybrid instruments and everything, it, it'll, it'll see that. Um, as far as recording goes, this is, looks like, okay. Pre-roll, I think this gives you, yeah. So it's like a little gap before we actually start recording on the starting spot. Um, this is pretty useful. Record quantization, I think you can do that. It's good because whenever you want to record your MIDI notes, you know, it can just quantize it to snap it to that because, you know, as human beings, we're not like robotic like that. Controllers. Um, Okay, that's pretty good. It sees my Arturo Microfreak, which I also use as a MIDI keyboard. Um, you can add more stuff here if it doesn't see it, I guess. That's pretty good. Um, so synchronization. Um, so I think, yeah, so I, I don't really know what this is exactly. Um, so maybe you guys can tell me um, if you, if you, if there's any bit big users out there. MIDI clock. Um, again, I'm not sure how this is working here. 
Um, let's go to locations. Okay. So this is where you have all your sound content. Okay, so it says, it sees my sample pack location. So wherever, if I wanna grab something from there, um, this folder, this directory is where I keep my you know samples and everything. That's pretty good. The plugins, it sees my plugins. Uh, you have some more plugin if, uh, settings here. You can add more locations. I think this is more kind of manual compared to Cubase. Um, Cubase kind of sees the plugins wherever they are located in your computer and just kind of sticks it to the uh, DAW itself. I think maybe here you have to explain to Bitbig where to you know pick up the plugins from. Um, and it's pretty much like Ableton. Um, I used Ableton for a little less than a year and um, it would be the same here. Plugins, okay. So these are your plugins. I'm pretty sure it is kind of linked to this wherever you set it up. It shows up here, blah, blah, blah together. Okay, so I guess this is like all the plugins that you know you might have. Um, and then shortcuts. This looks like this has got to do with keyboard stuff. Um, okay, that's good. Controller, um, I'm not sure what this is except. Packages, we got essentials, you can add more packages apparently. So this is pretty much like um, if you get, I think a, like Ableton Suite has a lot of packages, like add-on packages. Um, maybe it's just stuff that comes with Bitwig. See, there's like a Eurorack thing, I'm not sure what it is. Um, but yeah, it looks like there's a lot of cool stuff that's uh, happening here. And help is pretty much like tutorials and blah, blah, blah. So, okay, let's just dive in and see what we see. Okay, so I just wanna go over the layout here. Um, I, I picked only one screen, so I think everything that we see is gonna happen here. Okay, so this is, this looks, this kinda looks like Cubase, but in a way it looks like Ableton. Um, I know that Bitwig's engineers are, you know, uh, they used to work for Ableton and then they, I think, you know, made their own uh, DAW, um, which is Bitwig. And um, so I can see some similarities with Ableton, but also I can see a lot of um, similarities with Cubase. It's kind of like a hybrid of both, um, but, you know, more like Ableton, I would say. So here, you know, I'm selected, I guess yeah, I have to select it. Okay. So when you select an item, so it gives you an instrument, it gives an audio. On the instrument, I don't know what's added, so maybe. So see in Cubase, you would add effects here. Um, so here maybe, I uh, I think you might have to add the instrument because that's how it works on Ableton. Let's see if we can add a serum here. Okay, so you have to add the instrument here, it doesn't come predefined as it would have had in Cubase. And here we are in Serum and um, and we can hear it. So that's pretty good because our you know MIDI keyboard is working now. Um, so I think I just wanna go over, let's see. So here I think you can add, you can close that here. Maybe you can add the effects here. So if I want a, a procure, um, okay, it gets added over there. So I guess that's good. So it probably happens that this is too small because of Bitwig's 4K compatibility. So my monitor is 4K and Bitwig is showing it in 4K, but some plugins are not compatible with 4K. So it's kind of a GUI problem, I think. Let's say with, you know, ProQ, um, I was able to scale Serum to my liking, but you know, not every plugin is gonna have that. So maybe that's kind of like a caveat of um, having the 4K. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I think I realized here you have some uh, like knob controls. So it's a master volume, volume from Serum. So if I change this, you can see like the master here, um, on Serum, it kind of gets, you know, uh, modulated too. So I think that's just 
uh, a cool thing because you can then map your macros like right over here and maybe it's like easier to work with like you know those macros from like your hardware instruments and um so yeah it's just something that i um realized with uh bitwig um on cubase you don't really get to see that let's see what else we can do here so i think um i want to start uh going from the top here and then and then i'm gonna go here and then i'm just gonna do like a, you know clockwise uh overview and let's start with this file and with file it's pretty much you know just uh your regular housekeeping stuff um you have all these and with play so play has some options and automation right maybe this like arms your track to write automation on it um i don't actually know what these mean uh latch touch and write um okay our metronome overdub i don't really know what that means maybe you guys can tell me um what these exactly mean and so these are all the options you can have with play um this obviously plays it this obviously stops it and puts it back to apparently wherever your playhead is so this thing this blue thing is your playhead this little blue triangle and if you're an ableton user i think um it's pretty obvious to you and um record is pretty much record thing but i don't okay so you have to play press space if you want to record something so you enable your recording track and um let's try something let's try to record something here and i press that and then you press on space okay that's good so we have our i i think this is the cpu usage okay if you click on it you actually get to see like um like a real time uh data feedback of your cpu usage i think it's pretty cool actually i don't know what these arrows are i'm clicking on them nothing shows up uh, maybe you guys can tell me and when i hover over them it doesn't tell me anything at the bottom and um so the next thing is add okay you can add instrument track audio track effect track group track uh you can add scenes um scenes are i think something related to ableton um we'll we'll see what they are exactly so edit is pretty similar i think this kind of corresponds to whatever you would edit with your you know audio clips and everything um this is something you can undo stuff redo stuff okay uh duplicate loop region okay delete loop region okay event is loop selected region so that's what it is under event okay so it's weird because when i changed the track when i ch when i clicked on my cube uh serum it this was it was saying event now it's saying track um and it gives me these so maybe it changes according to whatever you have selected um so i change it to audio track it's still a track so it stays in the track if you're okay if you're here it goes to time okay i guess that's good um anyway so yeah that's that's what we got up here let's go over these this part this uh right panel here and um this is i think i must say it's kind of close to cubase um as i said i use ableton for maybe like less than less than a year and then i switched to cubase um so this layout is pretty much giving me more cubase right now um one major difference between this and ableton would be of course to have these tracks on the right side on ableton and having nothing on this left side um and having everything at the bottom whereas you know this is more like what cubase kind of all laid out like is laid out like um so yeah our right panel has okay so devices i'm assuming these are yeah devices but but also i think they are their effects you know so you get devices um and you get effects and then you can browse through them um 
this is like navigation. And one thing I realized right now is that um, you get to see the folders up here and you get to see the files down here. I guess I would prefer Cubase's way to do this because you can just like, you know, pop these out and then it kind of happens like a drop down menu in Cubase. Whereas I think here it's just like the folder view up top here and file view down here. Um, let's go to presets. So, okay, so these are folders. In each folder, there are devices or effects or like effect plugins, like Bitwigs, you know, integrated built in effect plugins. And each of them have uh, presets. So let's say I go to phaser, right? I'm assuming. So you can, I think, just drag and drop this as is here. And this is just going to be the phaser. But you can drop one of these presets and uh, it's this is pretty much like Ableton I think you can just drop the entire device onto your effects chain and it's just going to load that device uh, compared to you can drop a preset and then it's going to have that device dropped in there but with the preset you know coming loaded in so I think that's how it works um, and yeah that's just pretty much similar to Ableton this is it's a samples um yeah we've gone over this uh location in the you know in the opening window where you configure the folders and everything like locations for your samples um so here i think it's uh just looking at to looking at that uh, location so here i think it's just looking at um that location and it just picks up stuff from there so you can see it's a sample packs and this is exactly what I have in that predetermined folder. And um, it's just giving me all this stuff. So I think you would have to add like an extra location if you want to see like you know, samples from different folders. Um, I don't know if that's really convenient. I think I would like to be able to just, you know, browse into anywhere I want. So you only get you only get to see folders up here and you have to click on them to go down to each sample down here. So again, I, I you know, it's just a uh, personal preference thing. Um, but probably I would prefer Cubase's layout to this. Um, OK, here there are multi samples for which I don't really know what they mean. Um, it might be something that um, has to do with maybe like file types. Um, maybe these samples are only seeing WAV files, whereas these multi samples are only seeing RX file. I, I don't really know. Um, yeah, I, I want to digress. Um, but yeah, maybe you guys can tell me if there are any Bitwig users out there. Um, please enlighten us as to what this exactly means to have multi samples here. All right, so this is browser music. I'm not sure what this means to have music. Um, yeah, so again, maybe um, if there are any Bitwig um, users out there, please, please let us know as to what this means as well. These are clips and so it's looking at my sample packs folder and Let's see. So maybe these are MIDI. Yeah. So I think these are MIDI files. So the way under the way I understand this is, uh, this, the samples are looking at wave files. These multi samples, I I'm not really sure what is what they're looking at, and the clips are looking at um, MIDI files. So that's the way I see it right now. As 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 I say, this is a pretty impromptu video. Um, nothing said here is like set on stone. Um, but yeah, again, please correct me if I'm wrong. So I can go to files here. Okay, this is pretty much like any browser, um, just pretty similar to Ableton and yeah. All right, now that I covered that, let me go down here um, and right under my frame here, if you can look into these um, options here. So they look like they're kind of miscellaneous. This is the file. Okay. 
So that's what we already see. And this is show project panel. Okay, that shows you like project settings, I guess. And maybe it writes some metadata on your project settings. I think that's kind of cool. Um, I, I'm not sure how these are related to each other. Again, as I said, maybe they're kind of miscellaneous. Um, this thing does show studio IO panel. Um, okay. This thing does uh, mapping. So I think maybe this is something like a media learn um, in Cubase where you, you know you can like configure your MIDI controlling devices to certain parameters within the DAW and then maybe it's good for um, you know like live performances or if you want to like enhance your workflow in some shape or form um, maybe this is going to come in handy um, and let's see the last thing here is the keyboard looking thing huh which brings us this and I, I really don't know what this is gonna do um, again let's see if I can show you here yeah so this is the whole thing that you see here okay so let me try to go back to where we were so yeah we were here right here so now I want to go down on this uh, bottom left and just go over these um, we have a couple options here um, let's start with this and see what it does show mixer panel Okay, so when you do this, uh, some mixer options come in. So maybe if I add a serum or something on the third one, I'm going to see it, you know, third serum over here. So I guess that's good. And our um, sends go over here, right above my image here. Um, so I guess that's good as well. I'm not sure how much this is going to add to your workflow. Um, but I guess it's nice. Um, and I mean, these are still pretty much like considerably okay within the GUI to play with. Sometimes they're too tight and you want to do some like slight adjustments within this. And it's kind of, you know, it takes a toll. Oh, that's kind of cool. So you can, you can enlarge it and see what, you know, what effects you got here. So I, I think that's kind of cool as well. So yeah, this is this can be pretty handy actually. Um, if you have some real estate issues, um, you know, in, with your screen size and everything. Okay, so let's go to device panel. All right, this is where we were originally. Um, so we can just skip that. It just shows you whatever you have uh, as far as devices and effects go. And the third thing is um, automation editor panel. Okay, so. You can, I guess, this, I think this is kind of like um, Serum where you would have like, you know, envelopes, I think. And you would just be able to draw stuff. Okay, yeah. So it's it's really, did I say Serum? Okay. Did I say Serum? I, I think I'm in Ableton. So it's really, yeah, it's really similar. So you can just double click and draw stuff here so that's that's pretty that's pretty much like Ableton okay and you can I think change the parameters from here I mean there is like oh my god there's like 300 yeah there's crazy Emma you can pretty much modulate everything manually if you wanted to here all right so that's that was the automation editor panel and um, the last thing is a detail editor panel which is, um, yeah, our, our MIDI keys, right? So I'm just doing this as, okay. So one thing I realized as soon as I click on a note, I get uh, these parameters, like, like information about that specific note. On Cubase, you would get this somewhere like up here. There would be like a top bar on this portion of the screen. Uh, whereas I think here you get it on the, um, you know, on the right side. So there you also have more stuff here. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. So if you want to keep things kind of tidy and neat, I guess you can just use this. And here you get to have all these tools and yeah. You can, okay, this is kind of cool too because you, you have all the tools you can go over 
and I would like it because it's kind of similar to Cubase as well. So even the shortcuts to like one, two, three, four, five, um, I think it would be really easy to get used to as a Cubase user. So you can have this view where you can see only the media notes that you used, or you can have this, which is like the entire, you know, spectrum. And here you have track and clip outlet. Let's see. So the clip, it says, uh, Okay, so maybe it's this. So this just shows you the clip. And if you're in this view, you can just see the clip and wherever it is. But I changed the, I see it's kind of weird. I don't understand. So I changed the clip's position, but it doesn't change one by one here. So Whereas it, now it starts on 2.1. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure how much that's feasible. I would probably just rather go work in this track because you can already see the positioning of your clip. And if you're changing the position of your clip up top here, it gets updated um, real time at the bottom. Whereas I didn't see that here. It's just yeah so it, it, if you're in this video on clip view it's like your clip always starts on 1.1 which is kind of misleading to me i think i would rather work on this track view because i want to see where my clips are you know um but again it's probably some personal preference thing because apparently they got some feedback and they included this view here um maybe some users like it Okay, so we went over all these four options here at the bottom and let's go over these three here. And um, so apparently we're on air range right now. Um, that's how it looks like. Let's see, so we were here, right? That's cool. So air range and we can go to mix. Okay, so when we go to mix, the mixer with scenes and everything kind of show up here. So this is, I think, like the session view in Ableton. Yeah, in Ableton, it would be the arrangement view versus session view. In Bitwig, it says, you know, just mix. And the last thing we want to see is the edit portion out of these three. When you do that, oh, okay, so that's kind of... So it's kind of weird because... So you can have edit up here but then I, I don't really know what I'm editing um, within my arrangement. I mean, I know that I, I am I am on this, but now I can't really see, like if, if I have a lot of tracks that are called serum number one, I mean, I don't really know what's going on. One nice thing though is I think um, the modulation that I did um, within the MLO a pain over here at the bottom previously it gets just reflected up here so i guess that's one thing that's nice that you can just see whatever you've done with your modulation and i also realized you get like a little blue dot on whichever parameter you modulated or you know automated so i guess i'm just gonna go back to a range here and i would like to leave it at this all right, guys, I think I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Um, apparently, of course, there are a lot of things to unpack on Bitwig. And um, but I as I said, I just wanted to do like a really high level video um, for this. And I, as I said, again, I haven't used Bitwig a lot and I just want to really like dive into it. But this is just like kind of like the, you know, um, really facade of what we're seeing and just the overview of the uh, interface itself. Um, yeah, I wanted to go over certain things and see some similarities and differences between Cubase, Ableton, and Bitwig uh, because those are the three DAWs that you know I've kind of uh, encountered with um, throughout my producing life. And um, but yeah, hopefully in some shape or form, this was kind of helpful for you. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.